success and failure. This time we'll go and welcome you. While intruders down here. <laughs> it's been a long journey, Elder Wyatt. Thank you for your presence. <laughs> Don't mention it. Thank you for taking the time to welcome me. General, I brought our guests from the Express. Uh, oh, I'm sorry for my bad timing. I didn't know you were meeting a guest, General. Don't worry, you're just in time. <laughs> it's been a while, my friends from the Astral Express. Oh. <laughs> well, it's an honor to be in your dreams, my friend. Allow me to introduce you to General Hua Yin. He's the Arbiter General of the Xianzhou Zhu Ming, known as the Flaming Heart. <laughs> no need to be so formal. I'm just a tourist here. No different from other tourists who've come to attend the ceremony. Elder Hua Yen is not only one of the Arbiter Generals, but also the Furnace Master of the Artisanship Commission. Besides his martial skills, he excels in forging various weapons. Such talents are unique, even among the Arbiter Generals. Be it Arbiter General or Furnace Master, these are merely titles given to me long ago. I've retired several times already, but with the current change in circumstances, the Marshal has called me back to duty, and I had no choice but to answer the call. Well, in the end, I'm to blame. Living such a long life naturally brings its share of disapproval. It's, it's an, an honor, honor to meet you. you. General Huayan. It's my honor to meet you, General Huayan. No need to be all formal. Today I'm just a guest on the Lawfu, the same as all of you. So, these three are the ones you mentioned, Jing Yuin? The heroes who helped you with the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis? Indeed. There's Don Hung, March 7th, and him. Without their help, I'm afraid the Law Fu might not have easily overcome this crisis. So, the Imbibitor Lune's reincarnation has returned to the Law Fu and will attend the war dance. I'd love to have a drink with you, should the chance present itself. You're more than welcome, General Hua Yan. And this young friend is? Yan Qing, my apprentice. He remains by my side as my retainer due to his youth, which I hope will season him with experience. He will stand for the Law Fu's Cloud Knights in the upcoming war dance, ready to take on all kinds of challenges. Great, great! It's a real treat to see so many talented young people around here today. Oh, I almost forgot. This is my apprentice, Yu Li. Uh, it's you! Oh, it's you. <laughs> Hello. Oh, you two already know each other? Guess we don't need any introductions, then. What a coincidence! I was afraid I'd have trouble finding this girl. Oh? Now you've piqued my curiosity. Tell me, how did you two become acquainted? She helped me capture the escaped Borison prisoners at the Starskiff Haven. Allow me to express my gratitude for you. But when you left, you took my flying sword with you. Your flying sword? <laughs> oh, so that's why I found a dagger in my bag. Turns out it's yours. Yes, it is. Now that we've met again, I hope... 
<laughs> nope. That won't do. Won't do? <sighs> you want your sword back, right? Well, you can't just take it back. On the Juming, when you lose your sword on the battlefield, you have to reclaim it on the battlefield. <laughs> As for this little sword, it was supposed to strike that escaped Borison prisoner. But unfortunately, its owner's agitated state caused it to fly off like a kite with a broken string, and it missed its target. By the way, if I hadn't caught it and helped it hit its mark, that Borison prisoner would have gotten away. Hold on a sec, Yun Lee. You took my sword without even asking, and now you're refusing to give it back? <laughs> so much for Lafu Swordmasters. What did you just say? If you just stepped up and took your sword back from me fair and square, <laughs> I would have totally respected you. But nope, you tried to play it down, expecting me to just hand it back to you like it's nothing. In front of everyone! With all due respect, you don't honor your sword, so you don't deserve it. Hasn't anyone told you that taking without asking is stealing? If you want to settle this with swords, fine. Let's have a one-on-one -on -one duel right now. Yang Qing. <laughs> well, that's more like it. Just be careful. Because I'm not as easy to handle as the Borison. <sighs> you two, be quiet and apologize to Yen Qing. <laughs> hey! Whose side are you on, Grandpa? I... um... I don't take sides. It's a small misunderstanding. And an apology would be too much. I've heard about the Zhu Ming's incredible swordplay and craftsmanship. Most notably, the legendary Flame Wheel Octet. Seeing Miss Yun Li, who is among those ranks today, well, I must say, she definitely has that fiery edge. <laughs> Such grandiose names. Some folks love to spin these fancy titles. Trying to set the Cloud Knights apart. Yun Li is still just a young girl. A bit awkward and hot-tempered. So please forgive her if she's being rude. Well, everyone. Elder Hua Yen and I have some business to discuss. For now, Yang Ching, why don't you entertain our guests? And take Miss Yun Li to the inn. I'll find another chance to talk with you all. I'd like to express my gratitude to the Astral Express for helping the law food during the crisis. That's so kind of you. I mean, you've already thanked us so many times. Please forgive me for coming at an inconvenient time. You needn't apologize, General Huayan. All right, Yun Li. Take this opportunity to clear things up with Yen Ching. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. It's better to make friends than enemies. But I won't be heading to the inn just yet. I want to visit Lingsha. She just arrived in the Lafu and could use some help settling in. Yang Qing, once you've helped our guests get settled, go to the Artisanship Commission for me. I've heard about the attack and the detainment of the IPC ship. Qingzu sent word that the IPC members are protesting and wish to have their cargo back. See if you can calm them down. Don't get aggressive. Just make it clear that the Cienjo Law Fu has no intention of violating their rights. I'm on it. Oh, this trip is totally worth it. Compared to the Juming, the Law Fu is so much livelier. But, it's a shame the Lafu Swordmasters don't seem that great. Glad to meet you too. Are you here to participate in the war dance? Of course. To honor martial arts, the Cloud Knight's Ring is always open to outsiders. 
If you can defeat the ringmaster selected by the Sienjo, you'll not only win rewards and prizes, but also be making a name for yourself. Sounds tempting, doesn't it? Ah, that's how outsiders refer to my peers in the Juming Cloud Knights and the Artisanship Commission. We all train under Grandpa's guidance, learning the art of craftsmanship and swordplay. That's how we got that title, I guess. Just don't mention it in front of Grandpa. He always says that empty titles bring pointless challenges and conflicts. We Juming Swordmasters pride ourselves on the success of the group over the individual. <sighs> I have some things to do. Besides, little Yun Ching doesn't seem too happy about me tagging along. Yeah, you're right. I took it with my skills. So I guess you can say I'm a robber or something. How dare he imply I'm a thief? Totally different. Besides, the sword seems scared of its own master. I'd like to ask him. You claim to cherish your sword as your life. Yet you don't even recognize the state it's in right now? I didn't intend to keep his sword. I was planning to take this chance to return it to him. But now, I've changed my mind. I'll give that poor flying sword some proper maintenance. I won't consider returning the sword unless he learns how to say please, hello, thank you, and sorry. So he can forget about it for now. I'm sorry for Yang Ching's rudeness. Not at all. Taunted by Yun Li like that, even a training dummy would be angry. You've taught your apprentice well. If it were me in my younger days, I'm afraid I'd have drawn my sword and fought. Yen Ching can understand your concerns. On the other hand, Yun Li is still a naive girl who's only interested in swordplay. Honestly, I brought her here to participate in the war dance because I want to broaden her horizons. Hey, Don Hung. I thought all the Sienjo generals were like Jing Yuan. But that General Huayan, he looks... So thin and scraggy, as if even a light breeze would knock him over. Is that old man really an Arbiter General? Well, each Xianzhou ship has its own division and specialty within the Alliance. Not all of the Arbiter Generals are good at leading the charge. You heard what Jing Yuan said, right? General Hua Yan was once the head of all the skilled craftsmen on the Zhu Ming. Uh, don't you find it strange? Uh, do Sienjo people age? I rarely see any old people on the Sienjo ship, and when I do, they're usually travelers. But General Huayan looks like an ordinary old grandpa. Is he really a Sienjo general? Hmm, good question. He's right there. So why don't you ask him yourself? Nah, I'd like to live a little longer. <laughs> we should leave. General Jing Yuan asked Yan Qing to entertain us, so obviously, he has important matters to discuss. Let's not waste any time here. This is the report Ching Zhu just sent me. Let me take a look. Hmm... Huh. Looks like the General has given me a tough challenge. He wants me to try and help put the IPC's mind at ease. Well, it's not exactly a test. As Cloud Knight officers, we not only learn the art of war and martial arts, 
but also occasionally have to handle diplomatic disputes. It's just, you know, talking things out isn't as straightforward as duking it out with weapons on the battlefield. This is especially true when you're up against the IPC, with their non-stop corporate babble. <sighs> well, let's not worry about that for now. Shall I take you to the inn? It is the law Fu's honor to have you in attendance at the war dance. Yet, the fact that a simple martial arts ceremony has attracted esteemed generals from the Zhu Ming and the Yao Qing implies intentions beyond mere spectating. Might there be any specific instructions from the marshal? You're overthinking it, Jin Yuen. As I said, I'm here to broaden my granddaughter's horizons. I have no ulterior motives. However, I have no clue what the Yao Qing Arbiter General has in mind. Do you remember when you accepted this position? I told you that an Arbiter General's battlefield goes beyond the physical one. You'll need to lead and manage everything on the Sienjo. The title of Arbiter General holds a weight far greater than its literal meaning. So many years have passed, and you've done well. However, longevity for the Sienjo people can be a curse. Living too long means that every mistake you made will lurk in the shadows. And one day, They'll eventually catch up to you. The Marshal knows everything that has happened on the Lawful. As for the Merlin's Claw of the Yao Qing, she has come specifically for you. Speaking of which, why hasn't she arrived yet? They say the Merlin's Claw strikes like lightning. Being late isn't her style. That's not true, General Hua Yen. She's been here a while, but I'm sure you've heard of her unbridled nature. As soon as she disembarked from the Star Skiff, she mentioned having something to attend to and simply disappeared. You must be the messengers from the Sienjo Yao Qing, I assume. We are Jiao Cho and Moza, retainers of the Merlin's Claw. It's an honor to meet you in person, Arbiter Generals. Hmm. Now this is interesting. A guest who doesn't come to visit but sends a message instead. Hmm. What does she mean? Tell me. What could be more important to her than coming here? Master heard about a spectacular view in Scale Gorge Waterscape. I believe she went there to enjoy it. A spectacular view? Ha! Did you hear that, Jing Yuen? This person is being sarcastic. Please do not misunderstand me, General Hua Yen. I was simply stating the truth. Master thought it would be inappropriate to keep you waiting, so she sent us here. Once she's finished with admiring the scenery, she'll personally come and apologize to the both of you. 